Hey everybody, Coach Duality here with another 2v2 replay analysis. And this time we're here with King Creeper and Fur. And we're basically just going to be bouncing back and forth between both of them. Understand working as a team. Okay, so the first thing I notice is uh, Creeper's not rotating on this ball quickly enough. So, Fur starts rotating back. First, uh, on Creeper's left side here towards the wall. So, Fur's in a spot where he can really save anything. Um, like, by the time the opponent would be able to shoot that. So Creeper doesn't want to hesitate at all here. <clears throat> Basically, he wants to be charging that ball wholeheartedly, um, primarily to keep pressure on the ball and to prevent the opponents from being able to set something up, um, but also to open the opportunity of creating a 50-50 scenario. So Creeper still wants to go for this. Um, so he looks to see if Fur's turning on it, Fur's turning away from the ball. So Creeper needs to understand that signal of Fur turning away, that he should be playing the ball. Because um, you have the one and two spot in rotation, um, the two spot playing more of an anchor role, playing from passes or behind for challenges, things like that. So it's important for the first, that person in the one spot in the rotation to be attacking things um, without hesitation or pause. And here, even the slight turn away is basically considered hesitation. Uh, Creeper should just be going straight at that ball, uh, playing it soft against that near post there, and um, just letting Fur follow up his touch and getting ready to move from there. Okay, so I understand why uh, you didn't go at that again, which is good. So what I want to do is slow down this touch here. So you see you're killing all of your momentum and going backwards and then driving into the ball. So you're going to have almost no initial momentum while you're going into that. Um, but you're also touching it with the side of your car here, which isn't going to produce uh, as much power as playing it from the front. And you're also flipping away from it. So all of those different things are contributing to that touch being as soft as it is. Uh, you want to make sure that the line you're taking to the ball is where the ball will be by the time you make contact with it and that you're uh, boosting and dodging through the ball as necessary. You're a little bit too forward here and this kind of goes to the whole point of playing where the ball will be. So because this is high up but also coming towards you here, you want to be getting up early um, so you can meet the ball before it goes past you but also to make sure that you're meeting it before your opponents here. So you're getting this close up to it and driving farther and farther under and then both of your dodges are straight forward so you see that you now have to turn your car around and there's nothing you can do from there you're dodging um too quickly here when you're driving around the pitch remember that um, when jumping not as much, but when you're jumping or dodging at the ball, uh, you're actively committing to it. So you're committing your line and your play as part of the position to like being attacking that ball. Um, so whenever you're dodging like this, you're making it so the only way you can adjust yourself and you know like uh, like change the angle or like type of shot that you're going to be taking on is just by like moving your car around in the air. So it's important to make sure that you're driving around uh, as much as possible and then dodging into it when you need to. Because <clears throat> you dodged, uh, well jumped up too early here, you're throwing yourself above the ball but you also have no momentum because you kind of went forward and then jumped up so there's really not much of a resultant uh, momentum from there. And you're doing both of your jumps right away. And you see how high, like how unnecessarily high that's placing you above the ball. So if you are going to jump, it's important that you're just doing that single jump first um, for the most part of, of any situation where you don't need to just get your car as high as possible. See, uh, like situations like this, that ball's pretty low along the ground here. So you just want to play it from the bounce and just like play it into the corner or something for your teammate. But you're doing both of your jumps right away and you're just throwing your yourself over the ball so that when you do make contact, <clears throat> you're kind of just pancaking it, uh, like, right back into the ground. So 
So, if Fur is going to turn on this, then Fur needs to be playing it right away. Um, so, as I said before, when when you're moving back like that, you should be signaling for your partner to start rotating up and onto the ball. And you see how Fur cutting into that um, kind of makes them overcommit here pretty heavily on positioning. Like, they're both largely in their opponent's corner here, the same corner. So, if that ball gets sent over them, it's basically going to be impossible for them to save it. So, either Fur turns on immediately and Creeper stays back. <clears throat> or Fur just keeps going back and allows Creeper to just rotate onto the ball quickly, and then Fur just gets ready to play Creeper's touch. But you see here, it, it hesitated you, and now you're both kind of... you have to turn around, and it's harder to play the ball. So, again here, this is some hesitation. I think you choked yourself up because you're on the wall. Um, but you remember, like, you can jump out from places like this. Just do your first jump and just hold it and boost into the ball and play it from there. Um, try not to let yourself wait, even if you're not comfortable with a shot. Uh, the only way you're going to improve and be able to consistently play it is by practicing it, especially real-time in-game. A mechanical mistake there. I think you're just going a little bit too quick for your comfort when you're trying to play that ball around you. And you see here again, and you'll notice this basically the entire game, how jumping, like immediately jumping using like both of your jumps is throwing you too high. So like you're not using any boost in that time too. So basically you're kind of like flopping your car up in the air and it makes it hard to not only adjust and play the ball, um, but it also makes it near impossible to get any sort of power on it. One of you needs to be challenging that. Don't let... you see like the opponents, you, you have it in their corner. Um, first number one. First should be turning on to this to put some pressure on on Dr. Satan there. But instead you see Satan isn't seeing any sort of challenge or pressure, so they're able to take it all the way down the field now. This isn't something that you need to be going for, like, especially if you're not comfortable doing it. Um, you, you're still going to beat Dr. Satan to that ball if you wait, so you just want to wait till it plays that bounce and goes outward, and then you just have to beat him to the ball from there. Um, you know, if you have the time and space, make sure that you're not uh, rushing yourself too quickly to try to beat them, when in reality, you're, you're letting them choke you up and get in your head when they don't need to be, and you're not playing the ball as effectively as you should be. This you don't want to dodge at. Um, you can see here. So remember, your your primary concern here shouldn't be to score it, because uh, you're not you're basically not going to. Uh, you just want to be playing that off the near post for your teammate to finish up. And remember, if you're going to be dodging into the ball, it's going to keep throwing your car past that. So when you're facing the wall like this, uh, just drive into the ball. Just drive into the edge of the ball and chip it off that near post instead. You're throwing yourself at the ball, um, you're sort of getting a touch, but it's really weak because uh, of your momentum's being cancelled, and you see you're throwing all of the force of your car straight into the wall, and it makes it harder to recover. Just something to practice um, in general. Fur's playing that a bit too aggressively here. We can watch this from his POV. <clears throat> so... This is another instance where you see how dodging into the wall uh, puts you in a bad spot, and um, it's just m more often than not the like less perfect decision to be made here. So, first being, Fur knows he's being challenged from behind while he's trying to take this ball, and so basically uh, his primary concern is to keep it away from the blue team, uh, but he also wants to make sure that when he does, He's still uh, setting the ball up in a spot for him or his teammate to be able to follow up. So he, he dodges too quickly when he's already in front of the ball. So he makes a touch and, you know, it's there's no 
there's no real thought behind it. Um, just because you're kind of you're you're looking to just hit the ball before your opponents, but you're not thinking where's the ball gonna go after, where am I gonna go after, and what's going to happen to this ball in the play once I uh, perform the action I do, you know, once you make that effort. So you're boosting too much here initially and you're getting ahead of the ball. Um, so if you are, I would just slow down, try to make sure you're keeping a little bit ahead of your opponent so you can play it if you want. Um, but you can just chip that ball uh, kind of like slightly against the wall. So you know your teammates behind you here as well. So if you play that on the wall and out, the opponents are going to get it before your teammate. Then you're basically just passing it to them. So in this situation, uh, realistically, you just want to follow that ball back and just play it around um, when you're in a more comfortable position, um, primarily just keeping them away from the ball. Because, you know, you, you don't always just want to make it easy on yourself and your team, you also want to make it hard on your opponents. So, you know, like I said, basically you just want to keep this away from your, um, from the blue team there and make sure that you're able to beat them to that ball from then. And off this wall, I think you're jumping too... you're performing your dodge too quickly. Yeah, you're just... you're above the ball and you're not putting your car into it. So when you're playing it from the wall like that, make sure you have your line coming from behind the ball. So you when you jump out, you go into it. And just extend that first jump and boost into it. Make sure that you're getting some real power. Okay, so what's going on here is uh, Creeper's just going back and leaving that for Fur. So one, he's deciding that he's not going to touch it. Uh, two, he's deciding that Fur is going to attempt to touch it. Um, so what he also needs to think about um, as that third point <clears throat> is where is he going to be placing his car to follow up Fur's touch? So he can start moving back here <clears throat> to make sure he's behind if Fur misses. Um, but he wants to be driving around without dodging so he can keep moving his way around the pitch. You see here he's still going backwards, um, like pretty far. So the opponents end up just sending it back and then he has to play it from a point where it's hard for him to play it in a spot for his teammate in the first place. This is another one of those times where you don't want to be jumping into the ball or anything. Um, just drive into the ball. You have, you'll have you be producing force on the ball with the speed of your car, and you should be chipping it up because you'll be driving straight into it, so you'll be under the center line of the ball. Um, but by chipping this into that corner, then as you do the chip, you drive your car left, and you can follow the touch up as the ball bounces out. So again, this is sort of thinking in the future. You know, how are you going to touch the ball, and how are you, how are you going to follow it up, or your teammate? You know, what's going to happen to the ball in the play from then? So just try to think a little bit more ahead, um, and remember, without if you don't jump or dodge at it, you're able to just keep driving around much quicker to the line of the ball. Because you dodge into that, um, your momentum starts going the other way, and you're not able to finish it before your opponents can get to it. You're going way too directly behind your teammate here, so you want to make sure that you're covering different sides of the pitch, or you know, just spreading out from each other. Give each other as much space as possible. Um, he's not being challenged here. And if he is, it's it's, it's not probably not going to go back into this side. So Creeper's not thinking enough about how he's going to follow up first touch. So he wants to be going to the right, because Fur's coming from the left of the ball here into that left corner. When Fur plays it, that ball is going to be played to the right. And with him following back like this, he's allowing the opponent to be able to read it and try to follow it up, as opposed to him, who would have a much better line at it if he was coming from the right. And that also makes it so he can save something if it goes if it gets clear to the other side. 
just a general rule of thumb, you, again, it's just to make sure that you're coming from the opposite side, or at least around mid, when your teammate is playing the ball from a corner and trying to center it. So, you know, allow them to play the ball to you. Because if you're playing too close to them, then, you know, that ball's probably going to end up just going to the opponents first. So I think your teammate might have called you on this. Um, but again, we can look here to see why you weren't able to dunk that over him. So when you're playing the ball from the left side, because you're just jumping too late at it when you're behind it, as opposed to jumping from behind while it's moving forward into the line that you'll have. Um, so because you're a little bit late here, you're touching the ball on the left side, which means it's going to be pushed into Dr. Satan there. So you're unnecessarily playing this ball directly at the opponent um, and sort of dodging into him from the same line. So if we bring this back, what you want to do here is when you know you're going to be going at this, um, you want to go to the right, basically where your car is pointed right now. Um, you know, keep yourself at that line, use some boost, and uh, try to just jump up at it. You know, play the right side of the ball, but give yourself a little bit of a height advantage so that if you if it becomes like a 50-50 situation where Satan's making a touch that you play it over. Because you see here, you jumped from um, below, so by the time it does touch your car from above, um, you don't have an angle at it because it's kind of just a happenstance at that point. So here you're turning away from the ball. So while you're rotating around, one, you want to make sure that you're keeping space, but again, you want to be able to follow up, not just follow up your teammate's touch or an opponent's clear, um, but you need to be able to do it before your opponents do. So here, if Fur gets possession of this ball, it's going to go, you know, roughly somewhere towards the net, maybe from the corner or out from a near post. Um, but it'll be going over. So you're looking at this ball, and before you decide to go back, basically you just want to keep your eye on it like that and see if you should turn into it. You know, because you can still get back in time if you just, like, drive slowly backwards. Because if you're initially moving slowly backwards, then you already do have the correct... Well, not backwards, but towards, the, towards your net. You'll have that momentum already. So if you need to go really fast to save the ball, you still can. And because you're not jumping or dodging, you can and just turn your car around with some power slides. So you see that your teammate makes a touch, but you still go back. So not only are you going away from the ball in the play, but you're also pushing yourself to the same side of your teammate initially. And you see how, you know, there's, if you needed to follow that up, there's basically no way that you would be able to. So, why did you miss this kickoff? Okay, because you're, um, you're not turning your car basically at all. So when you're on the right side like this, if you're trying to do the type of kickoff that you're like planning here with that dodge, um, go creep off to the right at first and dodge yourself left so that way when you do your dodge afterwards your your goal side from the ball and playing it from the middle because you're going like this one you're playing yourself to the side of the ball which if you want to do a fast kickoff is fine it probably is what you're attempting to do here but part of doing that um that fast kickoff style against the edge of the ball is making sure that you're turning just enough so that you are touching the edge of the ball if you keep going forward um, then you're committing to a line that isn't working, so... You know, even if you get, like, kind of the basics of it right, you know, with the slightest errors and timing that are common to occur, it's important that you make sure that you're still trying to follow up the ball based off of where it's going. So this is a bit of, um, hesitation. He needs to get up at this ball quicker uh, by just doing a single jump and boosting up and then saving his dodge for when he meets the ball. Um, here he's waiting too long, so by the time that he jumps into it, 
um, it's going to touch his side, and he has to side dodge, which ends up being really weak and kind of a little bit harder to aim. Um, so what's important here is if he went up earlier at it and turned his car, then he would um, have a nice line from the ball from the front of his car, because that's where you're going to be getting the most force. You know, you have to realize if you're going to be like side dodging into the ball in situations like that, you're going to be getting like a third of the power that you could and should be having by playing it from the front. So here, instead of following it from like right under, try to go around farther. So you get this boost and you know this ball is flying and going to be dropping in front of the net. So one, get yourself a little bit farther away from the net so you can look at the ball and come at it with some distance and play it in. Um, but that way you, it allows you to just go quicker instead of just going straight up. You see here you're hesitating a lot and I think it's because you're kind of directly under it. You know, it might be harder to uh, understand the line that you should take quick enough. Um, but you see here you still, you, you're not turning your car. Um, but like, what's important with this is that you're not like actively taking a line like as part of your shot. So. You're really in your head thinking, okay, you know, I'm just going to hit this ball, I'm around their nets, I should get it before um, my, my opponent does. But part of making sure that you're turning into it is so that you can dodge through it and understand your line. So that when you are making contact with the ball and you dodge and boost through it, um, you're playing your car through the ball, so wherever you play your car is exactly where um, the ball is going to go, you know, based off of the... Um, like the previous angle of the ball before the touch. So because he's kind of directly under this, it's harder for him to point his car towards the net, which he would need to do to do a stronger shot on. So if he drove back away from the net initially and then used his boost, he can still beat him to this ball. See, so like he goes into this corner to get the boost, but he's not using it. You see, he... He took the time to dedicate his car to the corner instead of going out farther initially to get something that he didn't even use in the approach, um, like when he actually went through with it. So, try to just think about those things a little bit more. Really understand the point and the purpose of the plays and approaches that you're making at the ball. Yeah, I don't know why... Okay, so I think first starts coming up because he sees you move backwards. So it kind of looks like you're getting off the ball. So he starts to play up, and then Creeper, you know, again turns towards the ball. Um, while Fur's already trying to take a line at it. So Fur decides to go away. But he should never be going this far away from it. There's two opponents on the ball right now, and his teammate's in kind of a rough spot. So Fur wants to make sure that he's getting behind his teammates while his teammate's challenging, or just getting ready to play something. Um, so not only is he just running directly away from the play, uh, he's running away from his net, so it's harder to save something. But he's also doing so without ball cam on. So this, if he... He shouldn't be doing this in the first place, but no matter what, he should be having that ball cam on while he's moving so he can see how quickly he needs to get back. I don't think he needed to dodge into this either. He just wants to follow the line and play the ball, just like make contact with it from the other side as it touches the wall. So here again, you're dodging into the corner which is giving you a terrible recovery time and basically doing nothing with the ball that's productive and it's making it easy for them. So not only would you have had a better touch if you just drove into this, but you also would have been able to play the save. You see how hard it is for you to get back in time. Um, also, you don't want to be dodging there. Whenever, whenever you're dodging, like when you're moving across the pitch, it's important to remember that you're not going to be able to play the ball until you land. So there's a big gap of area where if it crosses, you can't do anything. And that's exactly what you're going to see here. Um, 
and I think it's actually because you're coming from the wall and that you are holding something. So when you're jumping off the wall, like, you know, the, around your net and everything like that, it's important to make sure that you're not holding a direction on the thumbstick when you jump, um, because that'll just cause you to dodge and flail out like that. And because he is, he's throwing himself too far ahead of the ball. So when he's coming down from this here, well, one, he shouldn't be jumping at that. But two, when he's going in front of this net here, he just wants to you know, like, drive, um, drive a little bit slower. I think he was trying to save this shot, um, here initially as well, um, but he's just facing too far downwards, so, you know, again, he wants to look into this, so instead of going this far down, he wants to make sure that he's keeping his car pointed up, because if the opponent hits this, um, you know, it's going to have some sort of heights uh, for the most part in general. So if he's pointing his card down like this, he's making it so he can only block the ball if it just rolls along the ground. Um, so by jumping directly out a little earlier, um, basically from this point, and then turning your car in the air to challenge will not only make it a lot harder for you to overcommit to a poor line but it'll also give you more control and like a better place to play his shots because if it at any height you would have never saved that in the first place all right so thanks for sending in this replay creeper and fur hope you learned something from this um be sure to drop a like if this helped you out at all and i will see you guys around thanks